In this demonstration, we're going to look at how we can configure DNSSEC. DNSSEC gives me security for DNS queries, and it also ensures that when the client does receive a response back from a DNS server, we know that it has come from a valid DNS server in our environment. So what we've done here is we've come into our DNS server. What we're going to do here is we're just going to launch up our DNS utility. So we'll come to Tools and Server Manager and go for DNS. Maximize this up a little bit. And the next thing we'll do here is we'll now actually configure DNSSEC. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come to our datum.com domain. And on our datum.com domain, what we're going to do here is we're just going to right click. And what we're going to do here is we're then just going to go for the menu and we're going to go for DNSSEC. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to sign the zone. This then brings us into wizard. So at this point here, we'll select next. Then what we have here on the signing options is we're just going to have a look down here and we're going to specify the table settings. So we are actually going to customize the zone signing parameters. We're not going to sign the zone with parameters of an existing zone and we're not going to use any defaults. So we'll select next. This then brings us into the key master. So on the key master here, what we're going to do here is we are going to ensure that the DNS server LON DC1 is the key master, which it is. So we'll select next. Then on the key signing key here, this is just the authentication keys used here. This is really just an introduction screen, so we'll select next. Then what we're going to do is we're going to click the add button for our key signing key. I'm happy with all these defaults of generating new signing keys. I'm happy with all of the uh, cryptographic settings as well. And I'm happy with the key rollover as well. So we're going to roll this over every 755 days. To be honest, I'd probably set that less out there in the real world. But we'll select OK. On my key signing key here, again, happy with all this information. So we'll just select Next. Then on the zone signing key, what we're going to do here is, again, just an introduction screen. So we'll just select Next. Then on our zone signing key at this point here, what we'll do is we'll select add. Again, brings us into a little wizard. Again, happy with all defaults, so we'll select OK. And then what we'll do at this point here is we'll select next. Then what we've got is we've got our next secure here. So if we have a look at this, we're happy with all of this, so we'll select next again. On our trust anchors, what we're going to do here is we will enable the distribution of trust anchors for this zone. And select next. And on the signing and polling parameters, again, we're happy with all this cryptographic information here. So we'll select next. Just have a quick read through. Make sure everything's intact. It is. Select next. And as you can see, it's now signing the zone. That's all being completed. So we'll now select finish. Now this is all done, we'll just come to our trust points, expand this up, have a look down here, and what we can see is if we expand all of this up, yep, a datum is indeed active. We've now configured the server. Next thing we need to do is configure the client. So in order to do that, we're going to do that through a group policy. So let's just go to our group policy management utility. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're just going to edit the default domain policy. So just expand this up, right click, and just click edit. This will bring us into the group policy management editor. And then what we want to do is just create a little policy to ensure that the clients do validate by using DNSSEC. So under our computer configuration, we'll go to policies. Under policies, we'll go to Windows settings. And then under Windows settings, we look for our name resolution policy. So within our name resolution policy, next thing we need to do here is we now just actually need to create one. So what we've done here in the suffix, we've made it a datum.com. We've turned on a little tick box to enable DNSSEC in this rule. And under validation, we do require DNS clients to check that the name and the address data has been validated by the DNS server. So now we'll select our create button. Wait for that to finish. So we can now see it's in the table. So what we'll do at this point here is we'll click apply. And that's the end of this demonstration of configuring and applying DNSSEC. Thank you.